All right. You know what? We got to get into <laughs> University of Michigan. Do we have to? Putridness. We can just skip them. Ah, you know, <laughs> golly, what? I'm sitting, bro. You guys had 100 passing yards. Oh, hey, as a team. As a team. Hey, as a team. Right. right. Come You're out together. Out together. Right, We're happy. I don't want to smile <laughs> about this team in any capacity, even even if it's dissing them, dog. Like, I'm. I'm yeah. so pissed right now. I'm so Don, mad hey, right now, dog. Donovan Edwards showed up well, over six yards of no, carry. Donovan Edwards was good. Over yeah, six yards did. of carry. That's yeah. the least of Michigan's oh my problems. God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Although he did slip when he had an open hole. But don't yeah. take this you know, guy's I'm bait. Not, he wouldn't be the first person good. to slip in an open hole, but go ahead. Shit happens, man. Shit happens. Where do we begin there? Because there's a lot of people who are saying that this is right at the doorstep of one head coach, Sharon more there's someone i do not look like there you look like you him. look absolutely like <laughs> you guys are jumping chip on your boy kool-aid oh, more yeah, no yeah. no whoa 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 hold on let's not right kool-aid just posed a hypothetical yes all right, that's, really all, that, 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 that's all so uh so stop typing everybody because uh, <laughs> right now this is a time for a nice therapy session because the reality is is we've done a lot of gloating with a lot of michigan wins so we have to take correction you've done a lot of gloating. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been about, telling hey. y'all i've been the villager telling y'all that the storm was coming and y'all didn't want to believe me kg i'm not talking about this year <laughs> I'm not talking about this. Year. I'm talking about the previous year. Okay, all right. I've been. And just, just before you go, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely no more. Can he get to 100? He got to 15. All uh, right, begin, brother. All right. Well, this is a therapy session, and I think the, oh the best gosh. words that I can use to start off are the words of one wise, very handsome man named Flannel Sam on Twitter. I didn't give it to <laughs> JB, but I'll just read it. I think this encompasses everything, at least in the macro level. I wrote. After the game, all of us Michigan fans have to officially accept the reality that our team sucks. Yes, those last three seasons have been absolutely magical, but that run is over. There's absolutely no excuse to lose to Washington. None. And let me paint a picture really quick of why there's no excuse to lose to Washington. And the greatest way to start is to look at the little thing called the PFF Big Board for 2025. Because... I always hear about how Michigan lost a lot of talent, and certainly they did. When you talk about their quarterback, when you talk about the offensive line, when you talk about receivers, some depth pieces on the defense, it's 100% true. However, I look at the PFF Big Board Top 200 for 2025. I see, let me count these really quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Michigan Wolverines on it. You know how many Washington Huskies? Anybody care to guess? <sighs> Someone zero. One. Jesus. They're running back Jonah Coleman. Mm -hmm. And out of those nine players who are on the PFF big board, let me count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Eight. Eight of them played. The only one that did not was Rod Moore, who's been out the whole season. So that's why I say there's no excuse to lose to Washington. At some point, you just have to say, our athletes are better than your athletes, and we're going to go out there and win a football game, and Michigan did not do it. And what, what plagued Michigan in this game? The same things that have plagued them the whole year. And before I get going on that, because I know people are going to accuse me of switching up, there are three things that I will not apologize for under any circumstances ever. Number one, I will not apologize for the national championship of last year, softening the blow a little bit, You're and we're right. still celebrating it. I will never apologize Hang for over. that. Because a lot of you fan bases have not experienced a national championship in a long time. Like, uh, State hasn't experienced one since you were able to go to a Beatles concert afterwards. <laughs> and, Shout out to Beatles. And Ohio he State fans out. have not been able to experience one since uh, Ezekiel Elliott was your, was your running back. And now he's washed in the pros. So I'm never going to apologize for that. And I'm also never going to apologize for being okay and happy with the Sharon Moore hiring with with like you know Jim Harbaugh being gone and Jesse Minner being gone and Wink Martindale coming in I know a lot of people want me to be upset with Jim Harbaugh for his flirtations with the NFL and all that so that they couldn't have recruiting classes and all that were <laughs> maybe optimal I'm not gonna do that because Jim Harbaugh is the greatest coach in school history he got us a national championship and as a player he was in the Heisman race one year and was a first round draft pick there will never be any Jim Harbaugh slander when it comes from me and there shouldn't be from any Michigan fan and I will not also apologize for not panicking preseason about the quarterback situation should I have yes do I look kind of foolish now absolutely but when you ha I had that national championship bravado I did and maybe it bit me in the butt a little bit but that's fine 
It also, you know, with the team, did that as well. But, bef but after that, I have to tell you about where Michigan has been plagued. And it's been widely encompassing. And this Michigan-Washington game was such a microcosm. First of all, turnovers. Mm -hmm. Michigan lost the turnover battle. Again, two to one. Second, penalties. Michigan was the, was the more penalized team, five penalties for 40 yards, and Washington was two for 20 yards, including that clown car on that last play after, this was after Jack Tuttle threw the pick when Washington was uh, trying to run the clock out. It was third and eight, and Wake Martindale sent an all-out blitz, and it actually looked like it worked until they got called for roughing the passer and pass interference. Crazy. Which one do you want? <laughs> Which one do you want? You can decline one and take the it's other. Like, how do you want it? I know. And like the bad one, one of them like was it. committed by Will Johnson, who you expect to be better. He wasn't bad, but you still can't do that at being the best corner in the country. But it wasn't just that. How about second halves? What have we seen all season long? I'll get to that in a second. But second halves. It wasn't even just the second half. In this particular case, it was the fourth quarter. Washington outscored Michigan 13 to nothing. And when you talk about turnovers, when you talk about penalties, when you ta talk about lack of second half adjustments, that does speak to a potentially poorly coached team. I'm not ready to throw Sharon Moore out with the bathwater or anything like that, but the early returns have been, I would say, less than promising. But it's not just those. Oh, wait, there's more. What about the quarterback situation? Yeah. Nah. I'm, I, listen. That's it. That's I, it. That's I'm the interested. whole segment on quarterbacks for Michigan. That is literally it. Yeah, they tapped out. But I'm interested to hear what Sam has to say about Jack Tuttle because I thought that the decision was interesting to go to him. And overall, yes, he wasn't perfect. He made some mistakes. But I just like the it way he like throws the football yeah. a little bit better. The offense just seemed to move better when he was on the field. He can give you a little bit of what Alex Orgy has in terms of getting out the pocket. But, Sam, what are your thoughts on Jack Total? Because I wouldn't mind seeing more of him uh, as the season progresses. We Man. have no choice. Yeah. You have no choice. Because Jack Tuttle, he did go in there and execute a really good drive. That uh, scramble and throw to Colson Loveland for a touchdown, that was nice. He actually could hit a Morion Walker. Welcome to the season of Morion Walker. <laughs> right. <laughs> he hit him for, 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 we got receivers. <laughs> hit him for uh, 22 yards. However, when I talk about the quarterback situation, you also have to include Jack Tuttle in all of this. Because, yeah, he executed a nice drive to give him the lead. But after Washington had tied the game and then actually had another drive where, where Will Rogers threw a pick to Ernest Hausman, which was a hell of a play by Hausman. What does Jack Tuttle do? Run around and escape a clean pocket for God knows what reason, run into the middle and get stripped and it's recovered by Washington and then immediately go down and score. And what does Jack Tuttle do on the drive that, where they could potentially tie the game? He throws a pick. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when it comes to quarterback play, I hate to say it, but it's obvious. There is no Power 5 team in college football that has it worse than Michigan. There's none. None whatsoever. None. You facts. can't name them. And, and that's you, not okay. You know what's wild is that even if, you know, we're like, okay, Tuttle looks serviceable as the quarterback, right? And you would think that a player of Alex Orgy's skill set be able to put him in some types of, you know, situational plays. It's like you can't even really do that with him. There is absolutely no reason to go to your more athletic quarterback like generally you would see that you'll see every now and then even at some of these these top teams they'll bring in one of those quarterbacks waiting in the wings that they know you know we can run a few more plays and maybe catch this defense napping if jake tuttle's the guy it's just like just let jake tuttle be the guy for me and, and and i think what really matters is not that they have this loss where do they go from here and it's not just a short-term thing but also the long-term vision as well i know they got the quarterback waiting in the wings but is that enough is that enough for this michigan team they're going to lose some more big yeah. names. They're it, losing some more big names. Especially when you got teams coming in with good offenses. Like, we saw Will Rogers in this game, and I thought that they absolutely went after that Michigan secondary, man. Jair Hill kind of was burnt toast. I know he had that slip in the end zone and all that, but just didn't like the day I seen from him. Zeke Berry as well. The secondary was, was well tested in this game. So, if you get down two scores like you were in this game right here, the offense just doesn't seem to have enough to be able to combat that. So that's where I worry. If it's a team comes in with a high-powered offense, then what are we going to do? No, and I want to respond Ooh. to that before we go into the future because we got a whole segment on uh, what, what a Michigan cannot be hoping for in the future. But, yeah, 
When I talk about all of the things that have plagued Michigan, when I talk about turnovers and penalties and quarterback play and et cetera, et cetera, on and on and on, injuries, like you, you name it, Michigan's plagued by it, but they do have a lovely singing voice. Yep. You also have to include <laughs> pass defense. If there is a competent quarterback, Michigan in some ways has been shredded by them. Mm -hmm. You talked about Jair Hill and uh, Zeke Berry. You might as well change their name to Toast. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like <laughs> pick on the kids too much. I mean, Jair Hill, I believe, is a redshirt freshman, but still, yeah. that falls on them, but that also falls on Wink Martindale for putting these oh, young man. DBs in man coverage too often and blitzing. Did you just yes, say Berry Jam and Toast? Yes, I did. Yes, I mean, I did. pretty much. If if Will Johnson God. isn't having the game of his life, it, then it seems like you kind of ass out on the, on the back end. Yes, just just being real. It's true though. It, it's true. Like look look at this. Will but Rogers. Will Rogers. Goodness. He he picked this defense apart like yeah. it was nothing. I know he wasn't perfect. I knew he threw that pick to Ernest Hausman, but like I said, Jair Hill, Zeke Berry, you can have anything you want against those guys, but it's not just him. Let's go back to Quinn Ewers. Mm -hmm. Let's even go to uh, Miller Moss, who Miller Moss, I'd say, had a mixed game, and he was under pressure more often than any other good quarterback Michigan has played, and it did take him 50 attempts to get to almost 300 yards. However, he did throw three touchdown passes. He did lead USC, USC to take a lead, and it was full of coverage breakdowns. That all-out blitz, which left a receiver not covered in the end zone. Makari Page not getting over in time. Speaking of guys who have blown this year, Makari <laughs> Page line one. Right. <laughs> when you have no defensive depth, you can't have your guys who you think are stalwarts take a step back and Makari Page has been awful this year but he's not the only one and that's what's so disappointing because when we we're talking about this defense we were talking about a defense that could potentially carry them we're talking about a defense that has according to the PFF big board three of the top seven players and don't get me wrong those are the guys that I would say are the least of Michigan's worries. Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant have been playing a lot better lately. And Will Johnson only gave up a catch for 15 yards in coverage on four attempts. But still, this is a defense that needs to be better, that needed to uh, not allow damn near every quarterback that they played to go off. And that even includes freaking Max Brosmer from Minnesota, who yes. almost led Mich Minnesota to a comeback win over Michigan. And Michigan probably got bailed out by a bad call and an onside kick. KG? Yeah, and uh, just real quick before we get into it, I wanted to ask you about Khalil Mullins, man. He had... A, a rough game in this one. It was nice to get a uh, Don sighting. You know, we haven't really got one all year, so it was nice for him to explode. But it, it just it doesn't seem like we can get both of these guys going at the same time. But with that being said, are you worried about Khalil Mullins at all, or was this just a good defensive game plan by Washington? I'm not worried about Khalil Mullins because – I think one of the reasons why they didn't feed him as much as maybe you think they should have is that they got down by two scores pretty early. And I understand that they came back and got it to within four at halftime, highlighted by a Donovan Edwards long touchdown run. Nice to see that, by the way, one of the few um, positive things. But I just hope in the weeks moving forward that Michigan can actually play with a lead and just pound it with Khalil Mullings. But mm -hmm. honestly, with the way yeah. that their quarterback play has looked, you should still be running it even if you're down 14 because that's damn near the best that you can expect. I know that we saw some nice things by Jack Tuttle, but we also saw reasons why he's Jack Tuttle. And when you look at this quarterback situation as a whole, if you really want me to paint the uh, a morbid picture before we look into the very bright future that Michigan has this season, Davis Warren, what did he do in three starts? Six interceptions. Right. I was about what did Alex Orgy do in his playing time? 148 yards passing on 3.4 yards per attempt. Across three games. <laughs> I don't think you realize how bad 3.4 yards per attempt is. That's... You talking about his running stats? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Say no, I'm, about not. To I'm lose talking it. about every time he throws the ball, <laughs> it goes for 3.4 yards. That's not completions. That's attempts. Mm -hmm. That's... You guys might not have a quarterback, but you do have the little brown jug, Sam. We do have the little, the little brown jug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. fuck yeah. that jug. That's what I was going to say. I, I was just waiting for him to kind of get through the rank. I know we have another segment. I do. Yes. But just remember, national championships. Yes, of course. National championships. Just You're going to go six that. and six. And, and you know, we'll get to that segment. We'll tee it up a little bit, man. Hopefully Mitten you made, hate, man. Hopefully Mitten yeah. made believes this. He says, nah, bro, it's the coaches. 
<sighs> Let's get to the next segment. No, there's def- the there's next. a lot to say when it comes to the coaches. Don't throw Sharon more under the bus. No, I'm not throwing <laughs> him uh, under the bus. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Sharon, maybe not so much, but the coordinators, I'm looking right at them because they're the ones calling yes. the plays at the end of the day. So I don't know about that. I, I feel like it was a split it. decision over this weekend. A lot of people were saying coordinators I and mean, you got half the people saying just fire Sharon more yeah, off I'm rip like what is going Sharon on stuff all over social media like wow yep. y'all are gonna be complaining if he's still coaching next year no I don't know about that Chase but you know what if Michigan does go six and six are we just supposed to blindly support him either oh well true. I mean, Chase rule Neil Amley that's okay <laughs> <laughs> that's all right I already said before it started to kind of get all of get all of the uh, leeches off my back that I'm never going to apologize for being okay that Sharon Moore was hired yeah never ever 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 Never. I was on my national championship bravado, which I had the right to be, by the way. Yeah. Every single right. And I still am. It's just when you see it live, when you see it play out, when you're so used to watching good football over the past three years, it's just it hits you where you didn't think you could be hit. You did, I didn't think yeah. this season could hurt me at all. And uh, that Washington game was just absolutely brutal. I mean, tried even, to avoid it. Even the Texas game was just kind of. That was fun. Thank you, Chase. Right. I, 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 I hated it, but this Washington we game, that's one Texas you just one, can't. Yeah, I got, I got coffee from Neil off that one. He took Michigan as his get right. He took him again against Washington. Michigan 0 for 2 for Neil on the Bro. get rights. He took the Jets, too. He's 0 for 2 on the he weekend. Stop. The get right didn't have a good Michigan. weekend. This Washington one, it, I'm, I'm serious. It it's a just, tough one. It's a, it's a cup check with no cup. Yeah. It's like, golly. I don't want to say it's going to derail your season, but that was a, a huge <sighs> blow. And this is what I was fearing. They were going to drop a game against a team they really shouldn't have dropped one against. So, but let's let's chill on the Sharon talk. Unless they go six and six or win five games or something like that, then we can revisit it. But we as far as we gotta at least we gotta talk about it. Maybe not firing him. Yeah, Obviously, but y'all got to give him at least one more season unless he wins five or six games. Then we can open the, the combo. Absolutely.